Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Grab your Bibles, let's go. Genesis chapter 1, we're going to be in verses 26 to 31. How are you guys doing? You guys look good. Come on. Give yourself an applause this morning. I'll, I'll, I'll applaud you uh, as well. Yeah, just got back uh, from Texas uh, last night. Um, had the most amazing time uh, with Troy Brewer and his team. Got to minister at an amazing conference uh, there last week. Uh, and got to meet some really, really cool people. Uh, or Rabbi Jason uh, Stobel, is that how you say his, his name? You know, Rabbi Jason? Okay, no. He's cool. Um, got to meet, uh, well, I got to do a session at the conference, a 30-minute session, um, uh, where I, I got to butcher the Hebrew language in front of Paul Wilbur. Do you guys know who Paul Wilbur is? If you were, if you were a Christian in the 80s and 90s, you definitely know, like, like there was him and Don Moen, right, and Ron Cannoli, Integrity Music, right? And yeah, so that, that, was, that, that was a good time. Um, he, he was laughing at me a few times. I, I, did, like, I did what we've been doing, the, the origin series. I took a, a few of my favorite components and did a 30-minute thing. And I did the one, you know, where I was like, and where does God create? In the darkness. Boom, right? The lights went out, and I found the, the, the leading laser guy of Dallas, Texas. And, uh, and, and so anyways, and nobody... I had uh, the tech team sign NDAs, right? And, 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 like, so nobody knew that I was doing, not even Pastor Troy knew I was going to do this. So I was like, where does God create? In the dark. <laughs> Laser beams. <laughs> and everyone was like, ooh. It, like, so, yeah, so, so, it, it was fun. So maybe I'll get a headlining slot next year. A anyways, um, <laughs> like, we gave them a daytime, we gave them the, the, we gave them the post-lunch, you know, slot and, he rocked it, right? Anyways, it was fun. Uh, man, and I'll tell you what, man, Troy Brewer and what they are doing there is absolutely incredible. As you know, we got to sow a significant seed um, into, into their ministry. Uh, they were telling us, you know, uh, about how the borders are open there, really, uh, between uh, Texas and Mexico. And p people are coming through and children are coming through. Children without any sort of legal guardians. And what's happening is, you know, with some of these children, the cartels actually smuggling uh, children and teenagers through right, right, right into the U.S. And then other times, children and teenagers are coming through and the cartel's there to receive them and to pump them right into uh, uh, the sex slave um, and pornography uh, industry. So we were hearing the, the worst, uh, the worst stories that you can even, you can even imagine. But, there, but the church is actually also there at the border receiving children and trying to intercept these children and teenagers before the cartel can get them. Yep. And even in some cases, um, the church is getting, they are uh, rescuing um, uh, children out of the cartel and out of uh, uh, the, the scene. Now, one of the stories that just really wrecked me uh, was they have rescued all these teenagers, 14, 15, 16-year-old girls, 17-year-old girls, um, out of, um, out of uh, some pretty intense um, uh, pornography, pornography ring type stuff that's happening in the U.S. This isn't even stuff that's happening in Mexico. So they're coming in the U.S. and then this exploitation is taking place in, in, in our country. And so they've got all these girls that they rescued. So Pastor Troy took them to Costco. And he said, see this? It's a credit card. You guys buy whatever you want. And he, he calls himself Daddy, and Daddy will pay for it. So these, these girls went into Costco with these shopping carts. And you know what they came back with? Coloring books. And he said, he said you wouldn't believe it. He said, we went back to the house, and all of our leadership team, we, 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 we sat at tables, and we laid on the floor, and we sat there, and we colored for hours with these girls who are 16, 17 years old. It was, yeah, uh, yeah another, another big thing. This, uh, 
they pay for uh, medical treatment and sometimes long-term medical treatment uh, for children um, and sometimes even their parents um, throughout, uh, throughout Africa and especially in Uganda. And um, uh, they were sharing, I don't have the exact stat, but you guys, they were able to pay for the medical treatment of over 10,000 people last year alone. In fact, one of the children that they rescued, um, he, was, he was abandoned by his mom. This is such a crazy story. He was abandoned by his mom because he was albino. And, um, and uh, the witch doctors, they want albino children because they've got special powers and whatnot. So the mom got rid of their child. Their ministry rescued, rescued this child. Um, and then the Lord re- brought about a restoration between this boy and his mom, right? So his mom gave him up, and then eventually he got to meet his mom. When he met his mom, she had severe infection in her legs and was about to lose both of her legs because she couldn't afford the kind of care that she needed. They went in there, and they, st- they put her on antibiotics, and she went into long-term hospitalization, and they said, we don't care. We will pay all the bills. They showed us video when we were there of this boy and his mom, and she said, look it, I have my legs and I can walk. And she began, she began walk. Like just stories like that. Um, it is, yeah, come on. Yeah, we can, we, can, we can celebrate that. And so you guys, it is so cool. It's so cool to be a part of it. And God, again, God bless you so much for, for your generosity. And it's, so, it's so, such an honor to be a partner with, with what these guys uh, are doing. And I cannot wait uh, to continue to share the stories as they come in um, throughout the year. In fact, just last Sunday, they rescued a baby out of, out of a duck. Uh, well, I could, I could go on with stories all day, but I will continue I promise to keep you in the loop uh, with these incredible rescue stories this next year. Is that good? Man, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Rescuing people and treating people with dignity. So good. All right, everybody there, Genesis chapter 1. Okay, guys, uh, if you're new to the church or newish, we've been going through the book of Genesis. Um, I would like to say chapter by chapter, verse by verse, but the truth is we're still in the first chapter because we've been going through this book word by word. And I, I joke around. I'm like, by the time we're done with this book of Genesis, I'm going to be retiring with my bass boat. So anyways, um, <laughs> it's been incredible. And uh, we're in day six. And last time we were together, um, we looked at God created mankind in his image and in his likeness. So we are like the photographs of the Father. And they're not perfect photographs because of the sin and our own fallenness and our own rebellion um, and our own fracturedness. Um, uh, sometimes there's been periods of our life where we didn't reveal the Father very well. But how many of you, uh, you are revealing the Father better and more truthfully today by his grace and because of his mercy today than you were maybe this time a year ago? Awesome. So we are being transformed by the renewing of our minds. And when we screw up, there's mercy, but there's grace, so we don't have to screw up like we used to screw up back in the old days, okay? There's grace to empower us to not have to sin. That's a good word. So we're gonna continue in day six, okay? And I'm gonna pick up um, uh, uh, at the very beginning of the creation of mankind as just a bit of a review. Um, And this is gonna be awesome because we're gonna be looking at after God creates Uh, man and woman, he blesses them. And the blessing is astounding. Today we're going to be talking about rada, okay, Um, which is the word for power, okay, dominion, authority. So this is what we're going to be looking at. All right, Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us, us, who's that? Yep, that'd be the family of the Trinity, Father, Son, Spirit, oh yeah, make mankind in our image after our likeness. Oh yeah. And let them have complete authority. Complete authority? Complete authority. Over the fish of the sea, all the fishermen said, amen. The birds of the air, all the hunters say, this is not good. I I always read Genesis to the context of an outdoorsman, right? You know, so and that's not the context of Genesis. Like, you did not give us authority over creation so we could kill creation. Okay, all right, so just for the record, all right? <laughs> all right. 
And let them have complete authority over the birds of the sea and tame beasts and over all the earth and everything that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image and in the image and likeness of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Just declare, I'm created in the image and likeness of God. And as I behold him, I will be like him. Hallelujah. Verse 28, so after he created them, he blessed them. And this is the Hebrew word barak. And what it means is it means to increase. It means to bring in abundance, to be in authority, to bring up, to continue, to enlarge, to excel, to be exceedingly full, to be great, great earth, to grow up, heaps, increase. Yep, 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 to gather, to yield, yeah, greater, more, to make, to multiply, to nourish, to be in plenty, yeah, and to store up thoroughly, very. So I love this because you were blessed uh, 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 just because you are a human being, just because you're created in his own image and likeness, you have a special blessing from the Lord that no other creature on this earth has. Has Yes, the tree huggers lied to you. You're not just an animal. You're not just evolved plasm on the earth. No, you're an image bearer. You're blessed of God. And he created you to increase and to abound and to yield and to have harvest. This is why he created you, okay? And so, um, yeah, so, yes, we believe in the supernatural here at Sierra Bible Center. Yes, we believe in, yep, demons and angels and principalities and powers. But we do not believe that we get to use demons as an excuse to not prosper and to not advance the kingdom. So many times in the church, you know, so many times in the church, it's like, man, what's, what's, what, what, like, what's going on? Like, like, like you're, you're not doing well. Yeah, I'm not doing well. well why, why is that? It's that darn spirit of Jezebel, you know, she, uh, you know, it's Leviathan. He's had me by my neck for the last 13 years. No, we don't, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> we don't get to use demons as an excuse to not not prosper. I mean, maybe for three to five hours, maybe one to three days. But after that, man, it is for freedom that Christ has set you free, okay? Yeah. You say, my house is haunted, and you're a Christian? Yeah, well, we'll have to remedy that, and it should only take no longer than 20 minutes, okay? Maybe three to five, all right? So, yes, so just declare, I am blessed of the Lord. <laughs> Therefore, I'm, expect I'm expecting blessing. Even people that aren't even Christians are born highly blessed and favored of the Lord. Just, just by the very nature that you are a human. Absolutely amazing. Okay. And he blessed them. Barak. And said to them, be fruitful. And we say, be fruitful. That means to multiply in number. Right? Multiply. To increase. And fill the earth. Everyone say, fill the earth. Okay. How do you do that? Well, you'll have to ask your parents. The point is this, okay? We're, that's not going to be this service, okay? No, no PowerPoints on that. But here's the deal. Um, we see in Genesis an understanding, okay, even a theology that blessing means having children, that children are a blessing. And in Genesis, and there's no restrictions or limitations to how many children you should have. And so you see this incredible blessing, and you see a great value for the righteous, right, who have children. There's great value for image bearers that have children children, that children are a blessing from the Lord. In fact, as we're in Genesis, we're going to read through the genealogies. You know, that'll be exciting, okay? You're like, honey, let's just stay home today. Why? This is the genealogy Sunday, right? No, you shouldn't stay home. You should come. It's going to pop. It's going to be awesome. But, you're, but that's important. Why is it important? Because children are important. Legacy, biblically, is important. The moment you have your son and your daughter, your ministry should change, and your primary ministry should be your son and your daughter, right? Now your ministry or my ministry comes second place because everything comes about taking everything that we are and positioning our children to rule and reign with Christ Jesus on the earth and to advance the kingdom of God on the earth. So listen, 
um, if you are a young person and you are, and you are uh, dating somebody and you're considering marriage, you need to have the conversation of how many children do you want to have? And if the person says to you, well, I don't want to have kids, then you should say, then you need to go to my church and give your life to Jesus. Because if you're a Christian, you should be having children. You say, well, physically, we can't have children. Well, come to my church and we're going to pray for you that, that you're going to get healed. Because we've seen lots of people get healed of that. Yeah, yeah, Jesus loves to heal that kind of thing. And if Jesus doesn't heal you, then come to my church and we'll raise money so that you can have an adoption and ad adopt a bunch, of, a, bunch of, a bunch of kids. That We believe that children are a blessing um, from the Lord. But here's the thing, you guys, um, that that is a radical thought if you live in Seattle, okay, where there are more people have uh, dogs and cats than actually have kids. It's also a radical thought um, if, if, if you don't believe in Jesus because if you don't believe in Jesus, actually the dominant, um, uh, the dominant frequency is that children are not a blessing that children are going to take away from your career. They're going to take away from, from the toys that you're going to be able to own. They're going to take away from the influence that you're capable of having. That children are going to distract and they're going to... And here's the deal, you guys. That's not a new thought, okay? That what Paul calls worldly wisdom, okay, uh, which worldly wisdom is cosmic wisdom. The word worldly is cosmic. It's the, it's the accumulation of data stored up over time. Okay? But Paul says there's two different kinds of wisdom. There's cosmic wisdom, the accumulation of data over time, and then there's spiritual wisdom, or wisdom from above. So we should subscribe to wisdom from above and not worldly wisdom. Okay? So worldly wisdom say children are costly. Children require time. Children mean sleepless nights. Children mean a lot of stress. Children are going to grow up. That little boy is going to grow up. There's going to be times that you say, what are you doing? Stop it. You know, that, that children are going to be a, a lot of work. And if you're in the kingdom of God, children are blessed. Now, let me just say, hit pause real quick. I, now, if you weren't able to have children, maybe you never got married. I just want you to declare with me right now, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Or maybe you did have children. You didn't really necessarily know what you're doing. Maybe you screwed them up a little bit. You got some screwed up adults out there. Maybe it's your fault. Listen, shame off you. <laughs> Shame off you. You might even have kids that call you up from time to time just to put shame on you. <laughs> but shame off you. There's no condemnation, and that's not why I'm putting this on you. I'm talking to the younger, youngish people that are thinking about their future. You better find a spouse that loves children. You better find somebody who wants to have some children. And then you better recognize that the blessing on your life is that you'd be fruitful and multiply and that you'd fill this earth with little humans that are created in your image and likeness, that this earth is going to be better because of you and your children and your children's children. It's legacy. Now, here's the thing, you guys. Uh, there are powerful people, and as we talk about power today, as we talk about Rada and people with incredible money and, and these kind of things um, that do not love Jesus, that do not serve Jesus. In fact, they are tethered with a frequency that is anti-Jesus or anti-Christ. And when you see an anti-Christ anointing, you will always see or hear a a narrative that says that children are not a blessing from the Lord and that children are a threat to the prosperity of the global scene, this one world thing that is going to come about, that, the, that this earth is being threatened, okay, by overpopulation of children and farting cows. This is, this is the narrative, that the, the, the future of planet Earth is at stake because humans are having too many babies and there are too many cows that are farting. <laughs> and that is absolute nonsense. We are told in Genesis that it is a mandate, okay, to be fruitful and to multiply, to subdue the Earth, okay? And so... Um, uh, this is not a new thought. Um, I, I mean, you can go on to uh, TED Talks and hear Bill Gates talk about the threat of overpopulation. And uh, uh, the fact that he says these things publicly is very, 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 very concerning and triggering. And I'm trying to maintain my focus, okay? But this isn't, did I say very, 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 but this isn't a new thought. In fact, if you go back and you look at the early pagan religions within Babylon, etc., that children were not a blessing from the Lord and that child sacrifice was a normal part of pagan religions. In fact, it's believed within various Babylonian uh, 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 spinoffs and beliefs that 
there's even accounts of the flood that destroyed the earth. It was believed that the gods destroyed the earth through a flood because humans were having too many babies and that the gods got mad because of the number of babies that humans were having. Satan hates children, all children, Christian children, you know, Satan hates children. He hates the blessing on humanity to be fruitful and multiply. And I'll tell you what, the earth's going to be okay. The earth's going to be okay. And the earth is going to be okay because of righteous sons and daughters that are awakened to their identity and their destiny. I'm telling you, when a generation doesn't know her origin, she will advocate her destiny. So if you start believing the lie of the enemy that the earth is being threatened because of yada, 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 you have to recognize that God's original blueprint will stand and God has a plan and the plan will be executed through the righteous. <laughs> We're teaching this to your kids right now downstairs, okay? But that's not our job. Parents, you have to tell your kids that they are such a blessing that they are not an inconvenience. You have to tell your children how proud of them they are and you have to prophesy over them that this earth will be better because of them. Your children have to know that they are such a blessing to you and that you love them so, so, so much. And even when they make the dumbest decisions that they have ever made since your dumbest decisions, you will still be proud of them, you will still love them and you will always believe in them. In verse 28, the Lord not only says be fruitful and multiply, but he says subdue it. And when say subdue, okay, have dominion over everything and over every living creature that moves on the earth. This is what the Father declares over humanity. Humanity, subdue and rule. This is the Hebrew word, radah. It's speaking of our jurisdiction. God says this blessing is this land, it is this earth, I have created this for you to live in. But not just for you to leave it as it is, but for you to steward it, for you to make it better. What's, what's, what's interesting is that um, there's this idea, Rabbi I, I, Jason, Rabbi Jason, I keep, Sobel, thank you, not Sobel, Sobel, yes, Rabbi, he was saying this this last week, he said, um, that the Hebrews don't have a word that implies ownership. And so he says that, 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 for, the, that for the Hebrews, they see everything that they're doing, everything that they're engaged with, as an opportunity to co-steward with what's been loaned to them from Yahweh to make it better, to increase it, and to multiply it. The reason why this is a really big deal is because when it comes to sex, money, and power, these are three things that oftentimes we don't talk about in the church. Many of us don't have any sort of theology when it comes to power, when it comes to sex, and when it comes to money. And the reason why this is a problem is because the enemy has perverted these three things greatly. That's an issue. Why? Because Power is part of the blessing. Authority is part of the blessing. The reason why that's problematic is that you got a church that gets triggered when they experience power because they've only experienced the corrupt side of power. So God is inviting for you to step into a realm of authority that perhaps you are afraid of or perhaps you have even cursed the very realm that God is summoning you to step into because of somebody that had a measure of power but they didn't use it the way that it was created to be used. They didn't farm the earth. They didn't, they didn't steward the earth. They saw it as theirs and they exploited the earth for their own personal gain. When it comes to these things, when it comes to um, power, we see three enemies, three enemies that come to pervert. It is pride, selfishness, and wickedness. In fact, a very powerful man, uh, a, a great king, who cried out to the Lord and said, above everything else, I am crying out for wisdom, wrote the book of Proverbs. Within the Proverbs, we see this contrasting between um, godly righteousness, right, and, or um, uh, 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 
righteous power and corrupt power. We see these themes of pride. We see these themes of selfishness. We see these things of wickedness where humans see their ability to do things in a way that other people can't do and they use those things to manipulate others to serve their own means and to serve their own needs. And within the church, we need to look at these corrupt forms of power and to say, yes, power has been perverted. But in the same way, so has money. Is money the problem? No. The love or lust of money is the problem. Is power the problem? Is rada? Is dominion? Is that the issue? No. The lust for power. The lust for dominion for your own selfish gain therein lies the issue. And we see this, of course, um, uh, within the area of, of politics and, and, and business. In fact, we've seen great exposure um, even with the Epstein scandal and even within this, this thing, this, this black male economy where powerful people are are, are gathering um, uh, data on each other so they can use that data to further their power. It's not just the marketplace. It's not just the place of government. It's also in the church. People that started off with a noble and righteous call of God all of a sudden step into more and more authority. And over time, because of their own fracturedness or their own hurt or lies that they have believed, they um, uh, uh, lead in such a place where instead of seeing that, that people are are children of God that need to be served, people become the means by which they can get their own needs met. Even within our own lives, it's always easier to point at those who are celebrated within our culture and to celebrate when we see their fall and to celebrate when, when, when stuff gets exposed. We, we've, we see this in the church. Uh, uh, it makes me itch when I see people on Facebook that like, this minister got exposed and they're like, hey, and they, they, they're like a hyena. Hey, and you're just like, bro, wrong camp. You're not in my army. We don't celebrate when people on our team drop the ball. You'd be a fool if you were on a team with somebody and they dropped the ball and you celebrated that. How dare you celebrate that? We don't celebrate each other's failures, but we do use it as an opportunity to say, Holy Spirit, come, because perhaps there is wickedness in my own heart. Perhaps there is pride within my own heart. Perhaps there is selfishness within my own heart. Father, please, in your grace, create in me a clean heart. There's always a test that comes with being blessed. And even as you begin to uh, uh, navigate through this year, and even as you begin to resonate with this great blessing from the Lord, that he has called you to be blessed and not to exploit the blessing, but to take this blessing and to nurture it and, and to realize that this earth isn't yours and your house isn't yours and even your children aren't yours, okay, that everything belongs to the Lord and you are being entrusted with real estate. You're being trusted with, 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 with uh, authority and influence and you take this influence and you take this real estate and, and you take your equity and you nurture it and you farm it and you make the earth better because of how you are applying yourself. This is, this is the great call to the church, and this requires accountability. This requires community. This requires being a part of all Plug Our Connect groups, that you would get into a connect group, and you go to srcconnectgroups.com. Ding! You would, come, you would come to our newcomers' welcome night on January 31st. There's child care. That you would come and that if the Lord is calling for you to join this army, that you would show up and, and, and that you would show up and not shut up. And that you would realize that you're not disqualified because of your past. You're qualified because of the gracious blood of Jesus. And to realize that you're going to be blessed, but there's going to be a test when you are blessed. And you're going to need people around you that can see your blind spots. You're going to need people around you that say, Darren, it seems like you're getting kind of confident with yourself. It seems like you're getting a little bit full. Of your, don't, don't, you don't tell me. I got a, a team that can do that. But, um, 
<laughs> hey, don't tell me on the SRC Facebook group, okay? Hey, don't, don't you guys all agree that Pastor Darren's getting a little carried away with himself, right? I, I just kidding. You guys are the best. Listen, God wants to bless you. He wants to multiply you. He wants to excel you. He wants to further you, but not unto you, but unto his glory and unto his fame so that there can be justice and reconciliation and restoration on the earth because of the righteous. And this is what he says. I am blessing you, and I want you to take everything that I've given to you, and don't exploit it, but farm it, nurture it, make it better, expand it. It says here, and God said, see, I've given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the land and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And all the vegetarians said, amen. And to all the animals on the earth, to every bird on, of the air, and to everything that creeps on, on the ground, and to everything in which there is the bread of life, I have given them every green plant for food. So they're all herbivores. And all the vegetarians said, amen. I could refute that, you know. I got some red meat sermons, but I've already been there. We've got to stay on track. All right. And that number, <laughs> verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was tov. It was suitable, practical, beneficial, and beautiful. And he approved of it completely. And then Moses ends the sixth day, as he does, with his mosaic pattern. And there was evening, and there was morning, <sighs> the sixth day. The reading of the word. You see, there's, there's, a, there's a battle for our, our understanding that when we believe a lie, that lie will empower us to make unwise decisions that are oftentimes generational. And we see these patterns within our lives where we say, I wish I wouldn't have done that. I said I would never be that. And then all of a sudden we see something is being established. And I just want to, I just want to tell you what these lies are. Power is not from the enemy, it is from the Lord, for the righteous, not unto you, but unto the glory of God. Amen. Ask the Lord to teach you what is required of you to upgrade. Can I tell you one of the things that's gonna be required of you? And myself, repentance. That when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, that is his mercy revealing something to you. Turn away from it. Turn to Jesus, because every time you repent, <laughs> you upgrade. So when it comes to sex, it was created of the Lord. It is created. We're going to be talking about that coming up. When God created Adam and Eve, it was created by God. It is not dirty. It is not corrupt. It is worship unto the Lord within the confines of covenant union between a man and a woman. But no buts. No buts. That's it. But what if the man? No, no, no. No. Covenant, lifelong union. Cut publicly. Friends, family, your priest, whatever that's going to look like. We want this public. We want this known. We will be together, sickness and poor, richer and all that. And within this place of covenant, we will worship the Lord with our union. Anything outside of that is a sin. We have, to, we have to take what God has made. We can't be embarrassed to talk about it at church. Moses wasn't embarrassed to talk about it. King Solomon, he just went overboard. Let's just admit it. <laughs> that guy just went overboard. You know, 
Jewish kids had to show their ID to even read it. Yeah. It was considered erotic literature for, for Hebrew youngsters. God created it for his worship. And money is not a sin. The lust and craving and manipulating people, lying, cheating, doing these things for money, that is a sin. And oftentimes these demonic critters of less for money, less for power, less for sex, these things, they all kind of run together. You open the door to one thing and then you, you open the door to kind of the whole, the whole herd. And this is what I know. God loves you so much. God loves me so much. He's delivered me of so much. I don't stand up here because I'm Mr. Perfect. I stand up here because of Christ's righteousness that has redeemed me. He's had so much mercy with me and he's given me so much grace so that I can make different decisions that I used to make. And this is what I know, that whosoever believes in Jesus does not have to perish any longer, but you can have life, everlasting life. Don't do this year without Jesus. Don't do this year without being surrendered to his lordship. He loves you. He wants to bless you. He wants to establish you and give you authority for his glory and fame. And he wants to set up such a found. Listen, the Lord's been speaking to you about this year. This is such a foundational year. You know, some of us, we want to see the big stuff this year. I want to see the big foundations this year. That's why you don't see me vision casting. We're going to start five churches this year. We're going to start five schools this year. We're going to start five coffee shops this year. We're going to start five counseling. No, 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 no. No, what I feel like the Lord's saying is get the foundation right. Because in 2023, I'm going to do a new thing. And if your foundation isn't right, the blessing's going to burn people out. And that's not just the word for this house. This is a word for your family. Get your foundations right so that his blessing doesn't become a burden. Get your marriage right so that his blessing doesn't become a burden. Get your parenting right so that his blessing doesn't become a burden. Let's get everything right so that when he says it's time to go, we're ready to run. Let's stand. You say, everyone say, oh, that's why this is going on. You say, oh, that's why all the drama. It's not God trying to embarrass you. It's God trying to strengthen you. And that means that, yeah, the engine's making some funny noises and you gotta pop the hood. Well, this is what I know. When, you're, when, you're in, when your engine starts making funny noises, that's not the time to ignore it. That's the time to reach out to a mechanic. And let me just say here in a second, I'm going to open up the altars. I'm going to have a bunch of mechanics up here. And all you need to come up here and say is, my soul's making some funny noises. I'm not doing very well right now. I'm not very strong right now. I need some encouragement right now. Or I'm making some really unwise choices. I want, to, I want to confess my sin. I want to get free this morning. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And where Jesus is, there's light, life, and truth, and abundance, and all of these things. I'm going to bless you here in a second. But if I'm talking to you, don't ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit that's speaking in your heart. When I'm done, I just want you to come and maybe you come with your wife or whatever else. Just come stand at the front. I'm going to have some of the best fathers and mothers in the faith stand with you. They're going to encourage you. They're going to prophesy over you. There might even be some Klingons, as they say, that we even cast, cast out of you. But when you leave here, I promise, you'll leave here stronger and you'll leave here more prepared to stand under the weight of his glory and the weight of his blessing. Just declare with me right now, I am blessed with the Lord. My Father's preparing me for increase, for abundance, to walk in authority, to wield his power, to walk in wealth and increase with integrity and to have the most vibrant, amazing relationship with my spouse. I'm going to have the best marriage in the church. I'm going to have the best marriage in America. I'm going to have the best marriage in the world. People are going to be so jealous of my marriage. 
and it'll all just be because of his grace and his mercy. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for each and every person that's here in this room. They are image bearers created to be like photographs of a great, beautiful, glorious, holy, awesome God. And many of you, the enemy's told you you're not awesome, but let me just tell you something. You were created in the image and likeness of your awesome Father, and he is doing an awesome work. And I just declare unto you right now, grace and peace be unto you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, this is what I want to do. I want to pray a prayer. I want us to all do it together. And we're going to declare the Lordship of Christ Jesus over our lives. Is that good? You might have prayed this five times before, but maybe you've never prayed this in your life. This is an invitation to be a part of the fastest growing family on the face of this earth. Why don't you just pray with me right now? Just say, Jesus, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are God. I declare I've sinned against you and I ask that you would forgive me of all my sins. I declare your righteousness is now my own. I am the righteousness of Christ Jesus. I declare you are my shepherd. I will no longer fear. I will no longer live unto myself. I will live for your perfect glory. Father, forgive me for using my influence, my charisma, my authority, my dominion unto myself and for my own glory. God, I surrender my entire life to you for your fame and for your glory. I know that as I behold you, I will be like you. And to be like my heavenly Father is my only desire. I surrender my all to you. If you prayed that prayer, you are now a part of the family of God. Welcome to the family. You are forgiven today. And when you mess up, don't run away from Father. When you mess up, run to Him, because His arms will always be open wide. And you will learn, and you will grow, and you will be strengthened, so you don't make that mistake again and again and again. You are absolutely, deeply, fundamentally, flawlessly loved by Father God. Last but not least, today was pretty good, but we will be back tonight at 6 p.m. We're doing a study called The Interrupters, and we're, we're doing a deep dive into the 12 original supernaturalists that follow Jesus. And then it's gonna go into the 12 mystic saints. And then it's gonna, it's gonna be wild. We're spending a bunch of time looking at the history of the supernatural within the church. And tonight, we're gonna be looking at the apostle Andrew and the apostle James. It's crazy. All right, love you, get prayed for, God bless you, you're loved, peace out.